G'day guys and welcome back to the Back Pocket Plug Up Podcast. My name is Caden McDonald and I'm joined by my co-host Connor Rogers. Rog, how are you travelling mate? Absolutely fantastic. I'm flying. I've never been better. Although in saying that, gee it's disappointing to have another remote podcast as opposed to side by side Collingwood style. Uh, that darn COVID, uh, I, I'm well aware that there's hundreds of thousands dying in India but there is no greater tragedy than us not being able to do this podcast together. <laughs> I know. I'm starting to miss you now. Like at the start, it was you know a, a bit of a thrill doing it, doing it remotely. Just, uh, just uh, you know, a bit of excitement mixing it up a little bit. But yeah. now I'm really starting to miss the camaraderie on my Monday nights. Oh, don't get me wrong. Like I do enjoy playing a bit of FIFA with a mate over Xbox Party. Uh, but there's nothing like being side by side with you know. I, I remember being in year year eight with a couple of primers, a packet of chips, playing <laughs> playing with the boys on the on the telly, and there's nothing better. So hopefully we can get back to that soon. Uh, Eleven cases today suggests we probably won't be there for a little while. Uh, but Geelong's actually out of lockdown, aren't you? Yeah, we are. So <clears throat> I think there's still no home gatherings. There's still masks everywhere you go, even for walks and whatnot. I believe, um, but we're out of lockdown in terms of like you just got to stay home. So I can go kick the footy and um, we, we can go to like sit down dinners and, and whatnot. But you, uh, uh, you went for a kick of the footy the other day and you told me some pretty, uh, pretty feel good bit of information there. Do you want to run us through your little kick of the pill? I can't remember what I've told you. You told me that you went for a casual kick of the footy, unless I dream this up. Well, let me re- <laughs> let me put it this way. I read a story about Buddy Franklin uh, during the week as it was an indi- indigenous round, and uh, yep. someone commented on the post and said, um, I couldn't be any more grateful for Lance Franklin. This one time I was walking through a park and I saw him. I didn't know who he was. I, he was from a different country. Um, and yep. he saw this big man uh, and he said, uh, could you teach me about the rules of um, AFL? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, <coughs> could you teach me about the rules of AFL? And Buddy Franklin, you know, started talking to him about footy. And he goes, oh, you know, do you play any? <laughs> and the bloke who was asking for the information said, um, do you play any sport? And Buddy Franklin couldn't believe it because he thought the whole time that this bloke knew he was Buddy Franklin, and then they got a photo together without this bloke knowing that he's the best player um, of the modern, modern era. Uh, and yes, I feel yes. like a similar story sort of happened to you during the league. Well, it did a little bit. Um, that's quite funny. I actually went and filmed uh, the Ice Bucket Challenge with Cooko, and we had a few kids coming up and saying g'day, and I thought that's what you were referencing. But no, on Friday night before my stream, I went and had a, a bit of a walk just to clear the head. I, I can get quite quite antsy before a, uh, a stream, especially D's Friday night of that magnitude. And I hadn't done one for six months-ish, so I was a little bit nervous before it. So I went for a bit of a, a, a head-clearing walk. And around where I live, there's the walking tracks aren't that long. We're in a new estate. So I was just doing laps of my little town. And um, I stopped at the footy oval. I had a footy in my hand as I was walking the streets and started having some shots at goal. And... Um, it felt good just going down to the park and having a couple of kicks, but I was just by myself. Were, had, you, had were the, you leathering them straight through the high diddle diddle? I I was, but as I was t- telling you the other night, sort of two out of three look really good, but the two that have gone through haven't been the same. Uh, the The action's not consistent. Like I'll sort of bang one and it'll come <laughs> off the in, instep a bit, a bit, but go through. Sort of bang the next one, it's off the shin. So I'll look like I'm a star. I'm kicking two from two, but then the third one, it, it doesn't quite mm. hit the mark. Bit but, of a lottery. Oh, a bit of a lottery. So I'm having a couple of kicks and this bloke came up um, uh, from Indian descent, um, really fit looking young man. He had tips in his hair. Hang on. He had, had, had some sporting gear. Uh, on look look quite like a- athletic, but anyway, he had a rugby ball in his hand and a soccer ball, and he goes, "Oh, g'day, mate. Um, do you mind if I join in?" And I thought he meant like my end of the goals. Yeah, and I'm like, mate, yeah, absolutely, go <laughs> well, for your of life. Of course, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't own the goals. Yeah. Anyway, um, so he sort of went back four or five meters and went, "Yep, yep, yep." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, for a kick? He wants no a worries. kick? I love that. I love. Yeah, it I was love good. someone I'll, as long as they, you know." It's obvious that you don't want to be that you want to be left alone. I love the thought of the random coming up going, "Hey, mate, do you want do you mind if we have a bit of a kick?" Yeah, no, it was it was great. So we had a bit of a, a kick to kick. Um, I learned a lot about him. I was teaching him 
you know, how, how to kick the footy. And then <laughs> at, at some point we're just having a quite casual, you know, two metres apart, you know, not two metres, five, six metres apart, kick to kick. And he goes, no, I'll go I'll go down here. And he's pointing to the goal square. And he's like, you start bombing him. You start bombing him in. Yeah. I was just going back from 40, just that <laughs> kicking him at him. You're <laughs> absolute, the ball for me. That is the dream of a goal kicker. There's nothing worse than when you go down, you want to practice <laughs> your set shot routine. And every time after you kick it, you need to run, go fetch the ball. After about 10 kicks, you're absolutely gassed. Exactly, and it, it felt it felt like a nice little community moment. It um, did. You don't say enough of that anymore. No, you don't, for sure. A- and at the end, I said, oh, look, mate, I've got to go. I've got to have dinner, um, and I've got to take off. And he comes over to me, and um, he, he puts his hand out for a bit of a fist pump, and he goes, no worries, mate, I'm ready. And I went... <laughs> Well, you've had one session, mate. I'm not sure whether you. I'm not sure, not sure how ready you are for a senior debut, but uh, I believe that that was his name. So I said, "Oh, yeah, oh I'm, Ka- right. I'm Caden. Yeah. I'm Caden." So oh, bit of fist bump and off we go. So ready if you're out there. Um, I'll see you on Wednesday for another session. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, I would have made the same mistake uh, if you had have come up and gone, "I'm ready to be drafted next year," and you go, oh, "Hang on, mate. I don't think you're right." And he goes, "No, that's my name." My name is ready to be drafted <laughs> next year. Then I would have had a few questions. But, uh, well, that is a lovely story, and I think we should all sort of uh, – there should be more community stuff like that. You know how you, once upon a time everyone used to be mates with their neighbours? I wouldn't have a clue what my neighbours looked like. Um, but uh, last week on the potty, uh, we actually uh, – we were uh, we failed in our responsibilities to keep up with our weekly headline. Uh, yes, the headline, the uh, – the, the, the Dawson Rodge Daily. Dawson Rodge Daily. It, it didn't get a gig. No. So it will get a gig this week. And the headline, uh, no one will be surprised to hear this, is <laughs> Blues Lose, What Else Is New? Bars. Uh, <laughs> gee. Gee, where do I even start here? So, Rog, I, I feel like it's a, it's getting a little bit Groundhog Day. <laughs> um, all right, we, we have the chat during the week and... I like to consider myself an optimist, but also a bit of a realist. I do tip with my heart, and I do like the Blues, but I feel like I'm a little bit of a realist. So, you know, you drop games against uh, the Dogs and the Ds, I go, that's probably fair. Coming up against the Swans, I think there's a chance for a bit of a a, a bit of a scalp, but you lose at the SCG, I think it's probably a little bit fair. Going into this West Coast game, I was, I was almost certain that... <laughs> <laughs> the baggers would be able to get it done and to not get it done but without that grit and fight on the weekend it was a little bit disheartening well we spoke about it earlier in the year uh about north melbourne and david noble saying something along the lines of um you know it may as well have been trust the process people were yep. saying because um, he he's trying to implement a game style that in future, when it all gets down pat and their players are mature, they'll win a premiership. So they could win more games right now, probably if they played a more ugly game style. They flooded the back line. They did all of this stuff. They Is could that get, similar to what Colin was doing. You think potentially, mm. um, but they could get scrappy wins. But they don't. Yep. Instead, they try to play the brand of footy that'll win them a premiership eventually. Even though right now, with their skill level, it probably means they're going to lose more games than they should. Yep. So with Carlton, if we're losing these, even though we were meant to be primed to make the eight this year, if we were losing these games, but I was looking at our game style going, yeah, you know, we've lost zero, we've lost seven out of seven games to the top eight teams, but I feel like with another year or two, I know we've been waiting a long time, but I feel like with a year or two, we work on our defensive setup, we work on our our forward strategies. Yeah, you know what? We could, we're on the right track, but I'm saying none of that at the moment. I'm saying absolutely zero defensive structure. <laughs> like when I'm so envious and actually jealous when we go to Melbourne games and we've talked about it before, but the grid you set up, it's so obvious for everyone to see that you are a defensive minded side and you launch from the defense after that. And it's absolutely mm. beautiful to see, but we turn it over and there's no, it, it's seemingly no defensive structure whatsoever. So you know, we've had five coaches since the year 2000. So um, a lot of the people are calling for David Teague to be sacked. I'm not one of those people. I instead would say to David Teague, you look at Buckley, you look at Hardwick, you look at Goodwin, and you look at many others. 
These are people that the whole supporter base and the AFL wanted them sacked. They were underperforming, but they st- stuck with these coaches and through faith um, and through growth, they managed to turn their teams into grand final and for um, uh, Damien Hardwick's, uh, in Damien Hardwick's face, a premiership dynasty winning team. We're going to stick, yep. we're going to stick with you, but you have to change things up. What you're doing right now isn't working. We can't keep going with your game plan. Change it up, adapt, otherwise you perish. So I'm not quite in the sack Teague train yet, but I am in the we need to see drastic change or at least an attempt to change. Otherwise, mate, we can't keep going like this. So just before we got on air, just before we kicked off the pod, uh, some news broke that there's going to be an – is it an external review where they're going to – is it external? I think in, uh, I th- I actually think it may be external, but I don't want to confirm that because um, we could actually be wrong. But it could be an internal review away as well. But either way, the fact that they're doing a review um, speaks volumes to where we're at, I believe. Well, the Crows did an external review the other year and it dug out some, some demons, but I feel like... That's how you sort of freshen up a football side. Um, like I think they got Chief Dunstall in to go through and just sort of have a bit of an audit of what was going on at it, the football I, club. I've just sorry, I've just done the Google of Sammy McClure's article. It is an external review, which often so, is more harsh than the internal. So I think that's a good opportunity to freshen it up. Like someone was saying, it's only David Teague's first year in the job. Like the the first one. It, it was an inter, uh, yeah. What's the word where you in in the meantime in in the middle in into intimate, uh, what intermediate, intermediate coach? What's the coach? Oh, uh, interim, interim coach. Jesus, sorry. Um, right. Yeah, he was an interim coach and coached about nine games, what in twenty nineteen, and then obviously the seventeen game season last year. So I don't know. It's a bit of a tough one. Um, I feel like. But it, it sort of feels like he's been been there for a while, but realistically, he hasn't. And he's he's sort of wearing the baggage of the last ten years, really. So I feel a little bit bad for Teague, but um, yeah, I, I think the review might help just freshen things up. Is yeah. that how you see it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's highly unlikely an external review happens, and the results from the review come out, and it's. You know what, guys? Absolutely everything's hunky-dory. You are on the right path. Uh, nothing to see here. You'll be right in the future. I think yep. that there's pretty much zero possibility that w- that's what happens. So whether it be assistant coaches, recruiting managers, fitness gurus, whatever happens, things will change as a result of this review. And uh, and it absolutely needs to. But I don't think Teague... I'm not sure this external review will come back as Teague sacked. But one little bit of interesting... A uh, bit of information that I heard Caroline Wilson talk about on the Channel 9 News tonight. Um, she said that she believes that because Collingwood is in a similar-ish position with Nathan Buckley, uh, it's putting pressure on Carlton because, say, Nathan Buckley does get the sack and they're after the new coach. A, whoever the next gun coach is, whether it be Alistair Clarkson leaving Hawthorne or it's Ross Lyon coming back to footy, Choco Williams coming back to senior footy, whatever the next big senior coaches. Yep. Collingwood would have first dibs if they pull the trigger sooner. And mm. I think, Carl, well, Caro believes that Carlton are wary of this and we don't want to let Collingwood get first dibs on whoever's available. So, you know, I'm not completely on the Teague out train yet. I do understand that it takes, I don't think any coach has ever come in, maybe with the exception of Chris Scott, but he had the dream team. Any coach has come in and within a year or a year and a half has managed to drill their vision into these players with perfection. Um, so yep. I can understand that it takes more than a year and a half. It can take three, four years. You know, you look at Hardwick and Buckley, it's taken them a lot longer uh, to reach grand mm. finals and premierships. So um, I'm not completely pessimistic about David Teague, but as for the football club as a whole, we deserve so much better. I know I've been paying me membership for the last five years and for the previous 18, me old man paid for it. And uh, we deserve to get some joy. If there was any other venture in life, whether it be business, relationship, uh, anything else, a hobby, if you invested this much time and money and you're yet to get any reward, you would have got given the flick a long time ago. So we need some joy. Fix it up. Blue baggers.
Mm. Yeah, well, hopefully, yeah, the review can straighten a few things out. I don't think they're – I've been saying this for a while, but I don't think they're as far off as what it seems. Um, but, yeah, hopefully hopefully some brighter days are coming. Yeah, well, that is the – just the last little thing on it is that's um, – for me uh, – Probably the more frustrating bit is, you know, and I've, I hate that I've barreled St Kilda the last couple of weeks in a row, but um, I look at St Kilda's list and um, I don't have the same optimism about the quality of their players as I do Carlton's list. I look at Weedering, full, probably all Australian fullback, Mackay, all Australian full forward, Walsh, soon one day will be a Brownlow medalist and Cripper or three time all Australian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I go, we've mm. got the players to be better. We deserve to be in a better position. So what's going wrong here? Um, uh, so yes, I I, I am op, uh, optimistic that things can turn around if the right processes get put in place, and let's hope the review sorts that out. But one team that most certainly does not require review is the beloved Melbourne Demons, the pre- outright premiership favourites. It was one hell of a game against the Lions, mate. What did you make of it? <sighs> yeah, it, it's 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 crazy. I I felt like I learned a lot about them on Friday night. To be honest, probably the most I've learnt about them all season. Um, you know, there's been times in games against GWS and the Saints and the Tigers where we've been a little bit off for a quarter, but gotten the game on our terms in the second and, you know, have control of the game for the rest of the quarter. There's been games where, you know, we've started a little bit slow but wrestled our way back. It was a tough one against the Lions where they were just on. Like that first quarter, they were drilling balls forward and Hitwood was clunking everything, Danaher was clunking everything, Charlie Cameron was clunking everything. You'd expect some of those entries to at least hit the ground and uh, that's when it becomes a bit of a 50-50, but they were clunking everything. They were silky with their skills, their tackling, their pressure. They were just on and I was a little bit worried that I was watching a Melbourne side that was off and that was a little bit cons- a little bit concerning. And I didn't quite come to that conclusion like, oh, we haven't turned up. But I was just going, geez, the Lions are a level above. And then we go into half time, 20 points down. And, you know, the Melbourne supporter of the last 10 weeks goes, oh, well, they'll come out at half time, flick the switch, turn it around, and hopefully make a bit of a contest out of it. But also, the Melbourne supporter in me from the last 25 years goes, <laughs> Geez, they kicked the first two and the third. We lied down. We could get rolled here. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I had no idea how it would go at half time. But to see the way they clawed it back, um, the way they essentially bullied the Lions for the second half, it was a forty-two point turnaround off the back of Clayton Oliver, Petrarca, Tom McDonald had about three touches, no score in the first half. Three goals, about ten touches in the second half. It was just. Really amazing, and I felt like we learnt a heap about the D's on Friday night. Absolutely. I tipped the D's, and I love the D's. So I <laughs> was gen- legitimately supporting Melbourne, and at the end of the f- <laughs> at, at the end of the first half, I uh, I saw I, I have so much belief in your football team and your football club that I was never there going, you're going to lose this game with certainty. But I met, I, te- yeah. I text you and I said, you need to be hard around the contest. It seems like this isn't the Melbourne we're accustomed to this year. And it seemed a bit bizarre. It's not like this is a mm. bit of a nothing game against Adelaide or something or North or whatever it may be. And you're not having quite rocked up. I'm like, this is Brisbane. This is, this is a statement game. But it was more than a statement in the second half. It was an exclamation with the way uh, <laughs> you, you absolutely turned it on. And, uh, in the first half, I messaged you as well, and I went, I reckon there's one weak link in your chain, and it's Alex Neil Bullen. Um, but he actually, he turned it on in the second <laughs> half a little bit. He, he did a couple of nice things. So there are no real weak links in your chain, mate, and I think you're more than deserve to be outright favourites. And you're $4.50 for the premiership, or four seventy or something. And, gee, for mine, that is luxurious odds because, in my <laughs> humble opinion, it is guaranteed you make a grand final. They're like... <laughs> There is, like, the only way you don't make a grand final is if in the prelim you don't play the brand of footy you've been playing. 
and which seems impossible to me. You are that well drilled. <laughs> I, I, I seriously can't fathom a world where in a prelim final you don't play the same brand of footy you've been playing. So you're going to make yep. a grand final, and when you make, <laughs> <laughs> and when you make the grand final, you're going to be paying maximum a dollar eighty. I think maybe even a fraction less. So for me, four dollars fifty seems absolutely luxurious odds. But make sure if you do, you gamble responsibly. Jeez, I can't. I can't even look that far ahead let alone make absolutes but it is quite funny like after the win on friday my mind can start to drift a little bit into the future where i do see i can like i've never thought of this in my life i've never sat there and thought of tom scully going up to the dais and and getting a premiership medal no not one part of me was thinking oh jack watts like I, i just couldn't picture that because of the state the club was in but a part of me can drift a little bit where I start seeing some of the celebrations and it's it's not out of the realm of possibility for the first time in my life time. So it's unbelievable and just, just quickly we will get back to the days. I'm I'm drinking a glass of red and you won't believe what's just happened. A a fly has landed and drowned in my red wine and now I've just really? now I've just got a dead fly in my red wine so that's that's not ideal. But yes, I, I sort of feel like Googling that to see if that's a sort of some sort of uh, some sort of uh, s- spiritual fly. Uh, fly and wine. Dying in. Is it fly and wine? <laughs> <laughs> fly and wine. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, well, no, there's no there's no spiritual. Uh, there you go. It's just a unlucky event. Thought it, thought it was an omen talking about the days and now the the fly and the wine. In the oh, geez, if you lose next week, that'll <laughs> who have you got next week? The buy or? Uh, well, yeah, we, I was going to make a joke there. We got the pies. Ah, you do have the buy <laughs> indeed. <laughs> <laughs> no, they beat Carlton. They beat Carlton. So if they're the buy, I don't know what we are. But yeah, you um, uh, j- just quietly. Uh, uh, pff, I mean, Gorn, Petrarca and Oliver, I mean, yep. you, when we're talking about the Tigers and you talk about their uh, big five that they had, you know, we're talking Cotchard, Martin, Rance, etc. You've got every every bit of that and possibly even more. So we won't harp on it too much longer. But, um, yeah, I, I've been saying it since about round three uh, that, that the days are the Red Hot Premiership fancy. So soak it in, mate, because... The blue baggers are still an absolute mile off, and I'll absolutely wish I was in your shoes. Just to touch on, um, y- you mentioned uh, the odds and the D's being four dollars fifty. I completely understand why, even though I feel like we're the best, we've been the best team so far this year, and a lot can change. Like there's ten weeks to go in the season, so I'm not saying we will be the best team, but in the first twelve rounds, I feel like we have been the best footy team in it and it's quite funny that we are there's still that hesitation and Kane Corns was saying if Richmond were 11 and 1 they'd be a dollar 50 yeah <laughs> or if uh, if Geelong were 11 and 1 they'd be a dollar 50 so it is quite funny that there is still this universal hesitation but I guess that's off the back of 60 years of mediocrity mm. like I um <laughs> like I've said about Carlton last week where I felt like we're now so separated from our history that you know, it's not like, oh, we're the Carlton that won 16 premierships. It's we're the Carlton that have been irrelevant for 20 plus years. I feel like yep. we no longer have any attachment in in any real meaningful sense to that past uh, 16 premierships of greatness. I feel like, Melbourne, you've gotten to a point for mine, and this is just my opinion, where you're completely separated from the days of Mark Neal and Dean Bailey. That's no longer your... Um, that's no longer in your DNA. It's been natural mm. selection has weeded that out. I feel like this is real, this is meaningful, and um, your history won't change your on-field performance. That's that's what I believe. It is an exciting time to be alive. Hey, Rog, did you catch the uh, the Swans and Saints game on the weekend? I did catch the Swans and Saints game. I watched. I listened to the first half on Triple M while I was at work, uh, which is a great way to listen to footy just quietly or, or mm. uh, consume football. I wish there was a way to watch yep. watch Fox Footy coverage whilst listening to Triple M radio in and have the have the uh, audio and the vision match up because that would well, be perfect. Yeah, I've thought 
that would just be the next step for KO, surely, because you can customize everything in this day and age. So I just think, imagine having like a list of like SEN, uh, Triple M, uh, 3AW just on the side panel, and you could just click on and have it all time up. I, I think that would be an amazing invention. It's just so much more entertaining when you're listening to them than when you listen to the TV broadcast. So uh, hopefully we get onto that. But uh, yeah, the <laughs> big story out of St Kilda and Sydney, and sort of. St Kilda season as a whole was uh, wayward goal kicking, excuse me, uh, wayward goal kicking, which resulted in a narrow loss. Um, and oh, Jackie, Jackie Snags Higgins uh, had multiple chances to bury the game, but unfortunately did not. What mm. did you make of it? Oh, he, he did not look like he wanted to have the ball in his hands late at all. Uh, went back, munged a kick, got really frustrated with himself. And then had another chance and did the same thing. Um, I felt pretty bad for him. I think he kicked 1-5 for the day or 1-6, yeah. something yeah. ridiculous. So he could have really um, cashed out. And It's crazy re- because he was just about best on ground, really. Like uh, mm. if you manage and you, and you can't this is, you know, you can't do this really, but if you could turn a blind eye to the poor goal kicking, he bossed the game. But it's so, such a shame that he's played one of the best games he would have ever played. And he goes mm. home and he wouldn't have gotten no sleep that night and absolutely kicking himself because he kicks six behinds. Well, it's been an issue for the Saints for at least three years. I remember three years ago, I think in the 2019 AFL parody, I made a joke that um, the Saints missed their chances because that was a bit of a topic then. Maybe even in the 2018 parody. Um, so we're three years on and that is still a, a brand. That's still a part of their identity well, what- that they... What sorry? What did you make of the Max uh, Max King Matthew Lloyd story? Frustrating. If I was a Saints supporter, I'd be frustrated that uh, the club, for whatever reason, won't allow a bloke to train with his junior football coach or like school football coach, who is one of the greatest kicks of the football in, in our sport ever. Like so, I don't really understand. If you yeah. haven't uh, if you haven't heard the story before, Max King, after his uh, game where he made the headlines for all the wrong reasons for his poor goal kicking, he takes Matthew Lloyd, who used to coach him out at uh, Halebury Halesbury College, um, and texts him and said, "Lloydy, I need help here. I'm not kicking straight enough. Uh, you're one of the greatest kick- goal kickers of all time. Can you help me?" Lloydy said, "Absolutely, mate. I'd love to, but check with your club first. Um, Max King asked St Kilda I believe he was Lloydie was prepared to do it for free um, Lloyd, uh, Max King asked St Kilda And St Kilda said uh, No bueno um, we're, We've got the resources here For you to learn how to kick And that would infuriate me uh, I don't know but, if, but, then, but then they put it out As if um, I think they twisted it in, in a press release Where it didn't come across Like that It didn't come across I think it was something like Oh Us and Max Have decided that we don't really want uh, two or three bits of information coming to him. Like we just want him to stick with the one, which is the coaches that we have. So I think they made it sound like he, like Max decided in the end, like, oh, maybe just listening to the club will be my option. And that's what made it really, really confusing. Yeah, it's un- unlike footy clubs to put absolute spin on a story to make themselves <laughs> look better. But bit, bit of SK. Yeah. Did you, did you hear uh, what Malcolm Blight uh, I believe it was Blighty came out and said about that that story. Nah, he what said did he, say? he said that um, go back twenty thirty years whatever it may be. Um, he got a text off a player who said, uh, "Blighty, I can't kick." A young player who's finding his way in goals. Blighty, I need help learning how to kick goals. Could you please come out and help me? And Blighty mm-hmm. said the same thing. He said, "I'd love to, mate, but you just need to check with the club first to make sure they're happy with it." And the player checked with the club. The club gave it the all clear, and that player went on to have a pretty handy career in front of goals. Do you know who the player was? Uh, Dunstall. Matthew Lloyd. So, Matthew Lloyd, right. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, you would Essendon afford Matthew Lloyd uh, <coughs> that, uh, that ability to train with Blighty, and you would have hoped that St Kilda could do the same with Max King, but they didn't. Max King's been, woef- uh, been you know, pretty poor in front of goals, and then Jack Higgins made... The headlines on we funnily this is something that you may expect from a Herald Sun, but for the AFL to post the headline Missy Higgins, what did you think of that one? See, um, 
tough. It's a tough one because it, I can understand how it is uh, a little bit condescending. I think a lot, uh, I, I, in my opinion, a lot condescending. Like, I think that's a genuine piss take. Yeah, and and, and it is. Um, but it, is it worth a bit of a please explain from the Saints Footy Club? Because Matt, what's his name? Uh, Lethleen. Apparently, had a bit of a please explain to a couple of yeah. He just messaged, um, messaged the um, AFL and the news outlets and said, you know, let's seize up a bit here. Something. A bit of a cease of, and desist. Yeah, which, uh, yeah, that, that's a tough one because I supported the worst football club over a ten-year patch, and the amount of headlines that we copped were. Uh, I suppose it wasn't a twenty-year-old kid um, and you know, a twenty-three game player. Or whatever Max King is, so I do understand oh, he's Jack protecting. Higgins. Well, Jack Higgins, yeah. Max King. So I do understand that they're protecting um, their their players, and maybe that's what we should have done with the Jack Watts, who was absolutely bullied out of the AFL for ten plus years. But a part of me goes, uh, you, if you just got to cop that sort of stuff, like that stuff is pretty bad, and and let it be. I, I don't know. I think you just got to cop cop it a little bit. Well, for mine, I think this is my opinion. If uh, you know, if a Herald Sun, you know, uh, writes something on the back page, then mm, you know, something condescending, not ideal. Maybe you ask them for a please explain. But when the AFL themselves post an article on their website that says Missy Higgins, the it's not like it, some people will say it's just a, a harmless pun. It's a bit of fun. But for mine, that's uh, I, I actually think that if I if I was the one in Jackie Higgins' shoes and I've just run around and I've had 25 disposals, 10-plus marks, just about best on ground, but I've kicked one goal six, and the headline that everyone in the country, they log onto the AFL app, they just read Missy Higgins. It's actually like that's an insult for mine. That's not just – different story if the headline was Jack Higgins misses two set shots in the last quarter, St Kilda's lose by a goal, right, something to that effect. Then hmm. that's just reporting what's happened. But there's something – but there's something about Missy Higgins that actually, to me, that's that's not just a, that's a legitimate insult. Don't you reckon that's like a legitimate insult? That the, the I don't think that's just a headline. Like for mine, I I would be insulted by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I don't think the AFL, being the professional um, organization that they are, that do everything to promote mental health and um, we need to protect our players and their well-being and don't, you know, they're trying to stop the bullying of the trolls online and that's the whole narrative that we're running with at the moment. So to for them to run with Missy Higgins, I'm actually in the camp that understands why St Kilda would ask for a please explain a season assist and a uh, let's not do that again. Mm. Well, it, yeah, so it came – did it come from AFL.com? It came from AFL.com and I'm not – Well, sh- that's, that's meant to be separate to the AFL. So it, it it does sound like it's come from like Gil McLaughlin's yeah. <laughs> laptop. But they are journalists making news the same way a Herald Sun sort of is. So they're, they're just looking for clickbaity titles and, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it I, I see it as like – Oh, I think it's probably good, actually. Like, I'm saying it is a, a little bit like you just got to c- cop the good headlines as much as you cop the bad headlines sort of things. Um, but I suppose if we are going to tidy up stuff like that overall on the overall picture, it probably is good because for far too long has has your 19-year-old players been hung out to dry. Um, I listened to the Zach Dawson, um, Dil- Dylan Friends interview and he had a bit of a stinker on a Friday night and basically off the back of your Herald Suns and um, your Sunday footy shows and whatnot got like became a cult figure for being bang average off the back of a handful of games when he was a 20-year-old kid playing on some of the best key forwards. So uh, now that I think about it, I think if we do clean some of that stuff up, especially the, the juvenile Missy Higgins type headlines, I think it probably is good. Well, yeah, that's like I said, I have no issues with the headline being... Jack Higgins misses two goals late and St. Kilda lose. Um, but, yeah, look, it, it, these online trolls that are going around DMing the players going, oh, you are pathetic, you've cost me my multi, you're a dog, all this sort of shit. You know, so we're trying to stamp that out and I don't think the AFL posting piss-take headlines or insulting headlines uh, helps, the, helps the cause. So that's 
That's me, but uh, in in a bit of brighter news, and we talked <laughs> we we touched on him um, a bit last week, but the winner of the what's the name of the medal for the Dreamtime game? I can't remember. D- but DP three has come out and won it, and he's probably leading the Brownlow at the moment. He's flying at the moment, Darcy Parish. Um, obviously, in career best, uh, this is what happens when you play. <laughs> you know. Play, play players where they got drafted from, uh, in positions that they got drafted from, was an absolute bull in the TAC Cup and for the Falcons. And, um, yeah, finally getting a run at it. But I also think it comes down to four or five pre-seasons. Um, not every player is a Sam Walsh. And I think he, he he's a professional, Darcy Parrish, and he was always this good in the junior levels. And you sometimes just got to let, the uh, the course take place. You got to let the four or five pre seasons kick kick in, and now that he's getting a real run in a senior type role in the midfield. Um, he's ready for it and he's performing <laughs> above and beyond. Well, I uh, I mentioned this earlier in the week, but you know he might in fact win a Brownlow. He will win Eston's best and fairest, and I think it's just about a lock that he will be all Australian, but. There is no doubts in my mind whatsoever that his greatest achievement to date so far is that he's managed to change the narrative around one Paddy Dow. Uh, if you look at all the top comments of Carlton's posts from the last few months, the comments are either drop Paddy Dow or whatever you do, don't bring in Paddy Dow. Uh, <laughs> but now the commentary is, look at what's happened to Darcy Parrish. You play him in the midfield, 100% midfield <laughs> time, and he turns into a Brownlow medalist. Bloody play Paddy Dow in the midfield the whole game, and who knows what could happen. So I think it's absolutely amazing he's been managed. And <laughs> lo and behold, this week Paddy Dow comes in and plays primarily as a midfielder. And then I listened to Tim Watson on SEN this morning, and he comes out and he goes, uh, and I texted you this Paddy Dow thing a couple of days ago, but amazing, mm. he comes out on the radio today and he goes, you know who Paddy Dow reminds me a bit of? Darcy Parrish. <laughs> and they're going, come mm. on, come on, Tim. But... Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing what Parrish has been able to do. And, gee, Essendon, the, you know who they got for the Adam Saar trade? Uh, Nick Cox. They got Nick Cox for the Adam Saar trade. So it's funny. It's a funny thing for Paul just when you think uh, the, the night is darkest. It's just before the dawn. So <laughs> uh, congratulations. That makes- that makes me want to go into battle. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations to you, SNN. It hurts my heart because um, you are, I have no shame in saying, my most hated team. But, geez, you've, <laughs> uh, you've overtaken Colton at a rapid rate and you are showing that much growth and improvement. And I'm actually excited by SNN. They're a team like Melbourne. I watch Melbourne and I love watching Melbourne play. I'm beginning to love watching Essendon play their brand of footy. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it too. They are um, yeah, one of the most exciting teams to watch, especially, you know, uh, they can kick six, but they can also concede 12 all in the space of 15 minutes. So it's sort of like you don't know what you're going to get, but you don't know You don't know what you're going to get with the Bombers, but you do know what you're going to get with the greatest segment in Australian football or media history, and that is the goals, the behinds, and the out and the falls. We need to get a sound effect. We need to get a uh, we need to get a little <laughs> sound bite for the GBOs, a stinger. Maybe, maybe, maybe a whistle for the, you know, goals, behinds, out on the falls. Yeah, I don't... I like that. And um, maybe for the YouTube, we'll put up a visual of um, an umpire waving the flags or something like that. Yes, yes, 100%. I'll kick us um, off with the out on the fall this week. Beautiful. Uh, my out on the fall is the Melbourne lockdown. And we will not be getting uh, political on this. Um, but uh, if I were for 30 seconds, I'd say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a lefty, I'm a Labor man, but gee, this, uh, here we are again in the lockdown and every other state seems to get cases, but they deal with it. They don't have to go into a lockdown. If they do, it's two or three days. Here we are, um, a couple, a, a, basically a couple of weeks in to yet another lockdown and uh, 11 more cases today. Once again, we are not an, on top of it, unlike any other state uh has been able to. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence at this point. I don't think it's bad luck. I think that uh, there is something seriously wrong. A bit like the Carlton Football Club's board. <laughs> I think there is something wrong upstairs in Victoria that we seriously need to sort out because it's costing a lot of people a lot of things. But, uh, of course, this podcast is about footy and it's costing us the, the greatest footballing state in the country. 
Uh, it's costing us football and it's costing me the opportunity to watch the, Carl- the Carlton Football Club disappoint me once again. So uh, something needs to be fixed up there, Dossie, and I don't think you'll get a bigger out in the full for the season. Yeah, I start to uh, get a little bit worried that, uh, you know, Perth put on a great uh, performance for the Dreamtime at the O and then there's a lot of chatter about how they're potentially the favourite to have the grand final this year. So it's like... Yeah, that, that sort of chatter starts to worry me. I know there's plenty of time for Victoria to get their shit together and we're not in as big of a hole as what we were last year, which ev- you know eventuated in us losing the grand final. But it gets it brings back a little bit of those memories and a little bit of those nerves. But um, hopefully we'll be all right. I'm going to move on to my out on the full. Bit of a different one, but um, a couple of weeks ago, Bailey Smith went out after the doggies knocked off Port at Adelaide Oval. And I went on TikTok and my whole For You page and news feed was just different videos of Bailey Smith out of of the club. Yep. Um, On the weekend, the uh, Bombers performed quite well over in Perth. And on my uh, Sunday morning, on my For You page and news feed was videos of the Bombers boys um, out and about. Oh, at, at Perth and they were getting you know the Bailey Smith videos of him out at the club got hundreds of thousands of likes and similarly to the videos with the Bombers boys and I was just thinking do we have to film the lads That's, while they're out and about at the club that might be my the biggest out in the fall for the season you have um, to be more aware than that you have to, like, how big of a wanker do you have to be to think, there's someone who's pretty good at kick- kicking a football round. I'm going to film them while they're trying to have a good time. Give me a spell. You know, you know what I sort of understand? I sort of understand because, I, you know, I, I've been intoxicated at a club and I'm a bit, you know, I, I can go a bit selfie mode with the flash on, film me, film all the boys. I wake up and it's in my Snapchat memories the next day and I've sort of done a bit of that. So I sort of understand geez, uh, you know, a play, uh, Bailey Smith's next to me. I'm filming all my mates, selfie on me, get him in it, bit of a laugh, send it to the boys. But it's the posting to the public platform. It's not just going to an inbox or getting sent to your mates as a Snapchat of like, look who I bumped into. It's this posting in a public platform to social media. It runs wild. It goes viral. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure I'm, I'm in support of it. No, I'm not in support. What does anyone get out of it? Like, even the people watching it that are liking it, it's like, okay, here I see Bailey Smith at a club having a drink, having a dance. What do yeah. you get? I, like, I, I do not contone this in the slightest, but say he was on gear. Say he was just railing drugs and you have a video of Bailey Smith <laughs> doing a big line of cocaine. Then, then uh, if you share it, at least I'm like, you know, someone might, um, if you're watching that, you're like, oh, well. Geez, there's Bailey Smith doing drugs. Like that's that's unbelievable to see. Uh, yeah, and I would yeah. hate that being shared, but I could understand why you would enjoy watching it, or not enjoy, but you'd be interested in watching it. Why yeah. would you? Why would anyone care about a footballer having a dance and a drink at a club casually? Why would that be something you want to watch? Yeah, and it just it feels a little bit naughty. It feels like it's um, a real invasion of privacy, and like everyone else at that club has the uh, assumption that they're just going for a good time and they're not getting filmed or um, being watched as they dance on the D4. So I sort of feel, yeah, a little bit sorry for some of the blokes, especially when it goes on to like a TikTok and, and like a public platform sort of thing. Absolutely. We'll move on to the behinds. And um, funnily enough, my GBOs, none of them this week involves a team. So I think that's a first. Uh, yeah, mine my, my neither. Oh, there you go. It's a double first. Uh, <laughs> my behind uh, is multis, multis, and uh, <laughs> uh, and generally, gen- and how prevalent sports betting is. Now, I am a punter. I used to be a lot worse than what I am now, um, but yeah, it's it's unavoidable unavoidable sports betting now, and it's completely entrenched in footballing culture, mm. where. You and your mates are watching the footy. Everyone's got a same game multi on. And that was me this weekend. Uh, uh, I had 75 smackaroonies on uh, Sydney, uh, sorry, St Kilda with the line of 22 points against Sydney. 
That got up. It was a three league multi. I had Essendon to beat uh, Richmond to beat Essendon. That got up, and then I had Adelaide to beat Collingwood. Of course, it got down by a kick. And my uh, behind is multis because when they get up, they can be so so good, and they can be some of the best fun you have. But more often than not, you always lose by one leg, and it can be some of the most frustrating. It makes <laughs> a, it ruins a good game of footy half the time. So that's my behind, mate. Multis uh, and sports betting in general. Yeah, I, I've I know uh, you know obviously the culture of, of footy is like a lot of people ch- uh, jump on the multis and and do a lot of you know a, a bit of betting and I've got mates who they will lose by a leg and they think that something's gone wrong. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it and and like there'll be three legs to go and they say oh, I have won this like I'm going to win this. Look at my legs. Look what I've predicted. This is going to happen and they almost have like this shock when they don't get up and. I don't think some of them understand that the house always wins. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. That like betting wouldn't be a thing if the multis that you thought would get up would get up. Like the reason they're a thing and the reason multis are a thing is because they very often lose. So uh, yeah, I, I don't mind like you know the cheeky punt, but there's a real uh, I, I see it a fair bit. Like the people who comment and DM AFL players the most are people who rinse them. For costing them the multis, yeah. So I see, I see your Dill Buckley um, share some of the uh, the DMs that some of his mates get um, that are AFL players, and he writes, you know, no one cares about your multis, boys, because yeah, the, some of these players can get rinsed for getting fourteen touches instead of fifteen, and they've got no like they're they're not out there trying to win your multi; they're just playing a game of footy. But then they're copying all this abuse in in. It. DMs. It's it's a, it's a funny little culture. <laughs> it is a funny little culture. We uh we're starting to get uh, get the wrap up from our producers here. So if you could uh we'll get move on to your behinds and then we'll get to the goals. Absolutely. My behind is I'm a little bit iffy about Queen's birthday at the SCG. I was rooting for it to be at Adelaide Oval. Obviously, SA are being quite strict with um the COVID at the moment and whether pl- uh, teams can fly in, fly out, and whatnot, despite. Uh, their state giving us the latest outbreak, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, I was yeah just a little bit iffy at the SCG. I'm not sure uh, football's as fun to watch when it's on a junior size footy ground, and I just would have loved to see Adelaide Oval just buzzing uh, with the Melbourne and Collingwood game being played there. But that's all right. Um, we'll still it, have the slide, won't we? We'll still have the slide at the MCG, which will be weird the, the in front slide, of an empty yeah, ground. The, the slide will be happening and at least the game's going ahead. So I, I, should, I should probably thank the SCG for being able to do that. But I was a little bit disappointed not to see it at the uh, City of Churches. Yep. What's your goals, Rocky? Which is, um, we should probably mention, fight MND, Neil Danaher, the man. G. I I hope he manages to hang in to watch the Demons Premiership this year. It'll be the greatest fairy tale of all time. Uh, moving on to the sausage rolls. Uh, mine is just the Indigenous round as a whole. Um, I had a great ma- friend of the show, Michael Allen, uh, message me and goes, how unbelievable is the Indigenous round? I've legitimately learned more about Indigenous culture from football than I have school. And I think that's pretty, on. pretty much as powerful as it gets, which is you know, uh, slightly an indictment on schooling. And um, I don't know if it's changed since we've left, but it's slightly an indictment on uh, what they prioritise in their education. But it more, uh, more, uh, it also marries itself to how unbelievable the job the AFL does to educate and inform the footy public on the Indigenous culture. So well done, AFL. I think the AFL do that really well with the whole range of, uh, human rights issues, uh, to be honest, and um, cultural issues. So I think the AFL get a big tick for that. Um, my goals is, it's not a team, it's Jamie Elliott. Oh. And he kicked six of them on the weekend. He used to be one of my favourite players growing up. I always loved uh, someone who can take a mark and kick a goal. That just screams McDonald's, uh, one of McDonald's favourites. And um, obviously battled uh, some injuries over the last couple of years. I think with his ankle, he was deciding whether to stay at the pies or go uh, a couple of years ago and the D's were sniffing around for him and so were the Lions but he stayed at the pies and uh, just exciting just exciting to see him perform the way he does I feel like if they get a big key forward up there someone like a Jamie Alec could really start to excel again Um, but yeah I was excited by the way the pies played I think their ball movement, which we criticised a week ago, was definitely on the improve. And to see someone like Jamie Elliott get on the end of it uh, made for a pretty good game on the weekend. Absolutely. Bucks has been listening to the podcast. So 
<laughs> nice to know that they're listening. McDonald. All right, Rog. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, they're all listening. Let's hope, um, let's hope David Teague's been listening this episode and we can see a vast improvement next week and I won't be so negative about my <laughs> beloved blue baggers uh, on the next edition of Back Pocket Plugger. Absolutely. Well, I'm hoping the Blues can start pulling some wins um, and I'm, hopefully uh, the Ds can keep winning so we can add to Daffy's stats. He, he didn't have a stat this week for us. <laughs> I, I feel like... Uh, it, it, people listening, neutrals, maybe starting to get a bit agitated at the constant Ds and Blues chatter. But in fairness, the main headlines out of every round of footy, even if you tune into the other footy shows, has been how good are the Demons and have been how woeful are the Blues. So um, when they stop giving us a reason to talk about them, maybe we'll start talking more about your Fremantles and your, and your, and your Adelaides. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Rog, thanks for another episode. Smashed it, mate. Oh, you too, mate. The feeling's very mutual. <laughs> uh, we want to thank everyone who tuned into the Back Pocket Plugger, Plugger, Plugger. Podcast. We want, to <laughs> we want to thank everyone who watched, who tuned in, who listened, who got around it. Uh, plenty of football to come this week. And we'll have another episode out for you in the future. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Keep plugging those back pockets.